Do you want to start? Sure. So, hello, good afternoon. I'm Marcia Rojas, and the project I'm working on is heat recovery from wastewater and urban water infrastructure. Specifically, we looked at a wastewater treatment plant in Denver called Robert Height Wastewater Treatment Plant Facility and a sewer line that leads up to it. Uh, my mentor is Dr. Jennifer Stokes Drought, uh, and I've also worked with many other people that are listed through here. Um, and our data was acquired from Jim McQuarrie from Metro Wastewater Reclamation District. Oh, you can slide. Okay. Uh, so just briefly going over what I will be going over. Uh, the background will include information on energy consumption due to water heating, uh, treatment, and past heat recovery use. Um, our, I will introduce our question, which is actually right there. How does heat recovery at the sewer versus at the wastewater treatment plant compare? And then just go over calculations, discussion, conclusion, and further research. You can click slide. Slide. Thank you. So, uh, wastewater treatment plants are the second largest greenhouse gas contributors in the waste sector in the United States, which is pretty massive. Uh, slide. Slide. All right. And, oh, back. Thank you. And in terms of the uh, wastewater, in terms of the water systems in general, heat recovery is probably the is is the big, the biggest energy uh, user. It uses more than ten times. It requires more than ten times the energy needed for the, uh, in, to supply clean water, and it's almost ten times the energy needed to treat wastewater. Slide. Uh, so through literature research, I've found that uh, they have been around for more than 25 years, uh, but they've been mainly implemented in Switzerland, Norway, and Japan, among other places, but these are the, the big ones. And the benefits include the ener energy reduction, uh, there's also financial incentives, and for wastewater treatment plants, they usually have requirements for effluent temperature um, because you don't want to uh, alter the environment that the water is going into, usually streams and rivers. Slide. Uh, so there are different types of heat recovery. There's decentralized and centralized, and decentralized is heat recovery in buildings, so the leftmost diagram. Uh, then there's centralized, which includes, oh, and sewer is also decentralized, uh, which is the center one. And then de uh, centralized is the uh, heat recovery at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and within these are different considerations when deciding which one's best to implement in certain regions. Uh, there's environmental, regulatory, and economic, economic and technical considerations. Uh, within the environmental, uh, there's daily fluctuations, especially in the buildings, because people are not showering all the time or turning on their taps to wash their hands. It usually happens in the morning and the evening. Um, this is not really a big problem for sewers. Uh, what happens with the sewers mainly is there's seasonal changes or um, within seasonal changes there's rainwater and it infiltrates the sewer it might change the temperature of the water flowing through. And this also affects the wastewater treatment plant which is where the sewer water is going to. But along with that the wastewater treatment plants are usually located um, far away from users, uh, so they may need to do heat recovery for their own use as opposed to providing it to other people. Um, for the regulatory, there's um, just maintenance issues with uh, buildings. 
usually I, I read some papers about how there's a lot of uh, fouling buildup in the build in the decentralized and um, it's for that's why uh, for waste for the wastewater treatment plant it may be easier to maintain um, there's also that effluent standard uh, that is required for wastewater treatment plants. Uh, in economics, uh, it's the cost per heat recovered is something that needs to be further looked into. Uh, there's a lot of figures out there, but it's hard to come together to which it's it's uh, based on the situation, location, and whatever's happening wherever you're implementing heat recovery, so the cost may vary uh, depending on the system. Slide. Uh, so our research question was, is how does sewer wastewater heat recovery compare with heat recovery at the wastewater treatment plant? And I included both of the diagrams. Uh, Originally, we were only going to look at wastewater treatment plant scale, uh, which would be the Robert Height wastewater treatment plant in Denver. However, we decided to also look at heat recovery in the sewer uh, because there's a potential user um, in one of the sewer lines that leads up to the plant. It's the Western Stock Show, and they hold a lot of sports events and different conventions. Slide. So looking back at the considerations uh, for heat recovery, we wanted to look at the efficiencies of different technologies. We also wanted to look at the, take into account the effluence requirement, which is uh, 14 degrees C, and the influent requirement is three, 13 degrees C. And the influent requirement is just um, something set by the wastewater treatment plant so that they so that their treatment processes are not um, affected. There's also uh, some, the cost benefits based on capital costs, maintenance, and energy savings. And we really wanted to look at the uh, greenhouse gas emissions that were avoided from the reuse of the heat. Slide. So we main. Oh, we mainly uh, just focused on the uh, second one, which was the effluent requirement of 13 degrees C. And so we got this diagram idea from Jim McQuarrie when he was describing the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the DGC line is the Delegany Commons, and that one goes uh, by the stock show, so that's the one, that's the sewer line that we looked at. Uh, the other sewer lines, we didn't have as much information, and we didn't really see a potential use for them, so we mainly focus on DGC. Slide. So we conglomerated those into other, and uh, added the volumetric flows of those and uh, calculated their temperatures based on the fact that we were given from the data sheets from the uh, from Jim we were given the flow rates of the Delegany Commons and the total daily uh, flow into the wastewater treatment plant we were also given the temperature of the Delegany Commons and of the wastewater treatment plant. And from those uh, at the top, there's the equations we use to solve for T others for both the flow and the temperature. Slide. Uh, to calculate heat transfer uh, for the heat exchange, we use Q equals UA delta T L M, uh, where U is the total heat transferred co transfer coefficient. Mary went over this as well. Um, a is the areas, the surface area where the heat transfer takes place, uh, and delta T L M is the logarithmic mean temperature difference. Um, 
Then the calculations below are for, for the respective uh, heat total available in the DGC line as well as at the power plant, I mean at the, at the wastewater treatment plant, knowing that the influence had to be at 13 degrees C. And from those we were able to obtain a slide. So right there. Oh, back. yeah. Um, the delta T LM, which was which included the wastewater in, uh, the wastewater out, which was the um, the effluent, and the cold water in, cold water out. Uh, for the cold water out, we back calculated that based on the 13 degrees C influent required. Slide. So our data, um, we this is the heat the Q that was acquired from the calculations. And as you can see, it's in the magnitude of gig gigawatts, which is pretty massive. Um, and what the reason for this was that uh, when we calculated the theoretical Delgany Commons uh, temperature uh, out after the heat removal, it would it was in the negative, uh, in the negative C range, which is impossible. You don't want to have frozen wastewater <laughs> stuck in your pipes. But it was the res the result was from uh, trying to get that 13 degrees C total influent temperature. So what this means generally is that you don't have to worry about how much heat you're recovering from the delegated knee line in affecting the treatment process of the wastewater treatment plant. Slide. And we did the same thing for the whole influence, uh, lowering the temperature, and uh, the results were also in gigawatts. So there's really, it goes to show that there's a big opportunity for heat recovery. Um, that won't affect the wastewater treatment process. Uh, slide. Uh, we also, if you look, the um, 14 degrees C effluent requirement is graphed against the north final effluent temperature, and sometimes they do go. Uh, over it during the winter season. Actually, they went over it a lot here. Um, but we did, we wanted to get an estimate for the effluent after the heat recovery. However, we were unable to do so um, because during because our values were very large. We wanted to address those and um, see where the errors were. However, we're still working on that. Slide. So issues to resolve and further questions. Uh, the estimate of energy saved through heating the sports complex was uh, somewhat addressed. However, um, we wanted to look more deeply into uh, get better values for that because uh, it's not likely that they are in gigawatts. And there are possibly more in megajoules uh, per second region. And we want to estimate the greenhouse gas savings of heat recovery from wastewater compared to natural gas, as well as the other sections of the considerations that we wanted to look at. Slide. Uh, so, if you have any questions.